That's one V, first stage fuel tank is pressurized, and the second uh, stage liquid oxygen tank pressurizing at this time. Now coming up on the two minute mark, T minus two minutes and counting, T minus two. Not as much uh, reports now on the uh, communication circuits as everybody stands by monitoring the various consoles and watching the various parameters to ensure everything is okay. T minus one hour, one minute, 43 seconds and counting. We are still proceeding. And just at this Aston moment, a great gust of wind sweeps our press camp here. Second mark in our countdown. Mark, T minus 90 seconds and counting. T minus 90. We have conditioned the liquid oxygen in the first stage of the Saturn launch vehicle. All, all tanks in the two stages now pressurizing. Most of the work over these final several minutes concerned with the launch vehicle directed by the test conductor, Don Carlson. One minute, 10 seconds and counting. We still are go at this time. Coming up on one minute. Mark, T minus 60 seconds and counting. We are go for Apollo 7 at this time. This is the first manned test of the Saturn 1B. Now pressurized and the vehicle is go as is the spacecraft at this time. First Coming American three-man flight. T minus 40 seconds and counting. First T step in our final series of here in the tests. Uh, to get the American time. on the moon All by the end of 1969. Seconds and counting. We'll get ignition of those eight engines in the first stage at the three-second mark in the countdown. Now, uh, T-minus 21 seconds and counting. We have completed our power transfer. The Saturn 1B launch vehicle, which now weighs 1.3 million pounds, is ready to go. Coming up on the 10-second mark. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Five, four, four three, ignition. two, we have ignition. Lift off, lift off. We have lift off. This is launch control. We have the tower. Roll command tower clear. 12 seconds out and the roll program has commenced. Four seconds out, and Shira reports the pitch program has commenced. Five thousand five degrees. Roll complete. Forty seconds. The roll program is complete. Roger, Shira. Nice. Get all noisy now. Five seconds. The cabin is relieving. Shira reported a little noise. One minute. One minute, 20 seconds into the flight. All systems go on the ground and in the air. Wally says, I'll 
beautiful. That tower has really jettisoned. It went way out. We are nearly 50 miles altitude now and about 60 miles downrange. Three minutes, five seconds into the flight. just tagged up with a Capcom uh, here in Houston, a very clean uh, voice communication today. Three minutes, 25 seconds into the flight. Trajectory and guidance, uh, give another go here. Well, it says a little bumpy on the second stage, a little bumpy, but uh, we, can't, we can't hear any complaints. 70 miles altitude and about 120 miles downrange. Four minutes, 10 seconds into the flight. Says the gimbal check looks very good. His observation is the one G stuff is great. Apparently the G lows were quite low. Raw's heart rate because that's the only physical parameter we have coming through, and it. Uh, at launch and through the early stages ran about 90 to 92 beats. Four minutes, 50 seconds into the flight. The flight director is polling all his stations here and is getting enthusiastic goes at every console. Five minutes into the flight. And we've heard from Don Isley, he reported the spacecraft guidance go. 90 miles altitude now. nearly 250 miles down range at five minutes and 25 seconds into the flight. The, uh, the guidance tracks are exactly over overlays here in the control center. That is the plan versus the actual. Wally says she's riding like a dream at 5 minutes 58 seconds into the flight. Mark 6 minutes. Mark six minutes, 30 seconds, where the trajectory now is beginning to level out at uh, nearly 110 miles altitude. And we are coming up nearly 400 miles out over the Atlantic Ocean. Capcom Jack Schweigert here in Houston reassures the crew that you're right on the old button. And uh, the communications are so clear, it sounds like the crew is working from the simulator. Seven minutes, three seconds into the flight. We just had our first report from Walt Cunningham in the right seat, reporting on the antennas. His communication was not quite as clean as that from Isley and Shirab, but uh, quite readable. Seven minutes, 30 seconds into the flight. Seven minutes, 45 seconds into the flight.
mark, eight minutes into the flight. And the crew reports the guidance. Uh, Don Isley reported the guidance is go at eight minutes. We're eight minutes, 15 seconds. We're predicting a cutoff time at 10 minutes plus one six seconds, plus 16 seconds, I believe. Eight minutes, 40 seconds, and now the trajectory has flattened out at about 125 nautical miles. And we're uh, 800 miles downrange. The communication in the last minute has gotten somewhat uh, gravelly, not nearly as clean as it was in the early part. And Sherrod, nine minutes reports, we're go for orbit. Control Center here is considering shifting the uh, comm loop to the Vanguard ship, which is parked out south of Bermuda, somewhere mid-Atlantic. Emphasize the communications are still quite good. They were just extraordinary through the first six minutes of the flight. At nine minutes, 30 seconds into the flight, all systems are in excellent shape. And 20 seconds, 10 minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. We're now coming up on uh, on my mark, 10 minutes into the flight, mark 10 minutes. Ten minutes, 10 seconds. And we got a cutoff. It sounded to me like at about 10 minutes, 19 seconds. Shira confirmed it. And uh, Isley noted that uh, it, it felt a little different than when they were on the booster when that cutoff came through. They will remain uh, attached to the S-4B, that second stage, and they're beginning a go to to stay in the plan configuration attached to the second stage for uh, perhaps a, a nearly three hours. <laughs> 